Remember I told you that powerful bars shoot their support to the right. It's almost like they're Spider-Man and they shoot a very powerful web to the right. It serves almost like as a, as a support force field. And so when a stock tries to penetrate all these levels, it becomes hard to penetrate all the levels. All right? And so I also told you that if you happen to get the power bar with the 200 right underneath or somewhere underneath the high of the power bar, either under the whole bar or somewhere underneath the high, that the 200 is also shooting its power upward. That's right. So you create this double knit support, this two ply. When you have this dual layer of support, wow, it becomes extraordinarily difficult for any dip into this pocket here to penetrate all of it. This pocket will tend to shoot the stock up in a very powerful way. And that is what you see in Facebook, it's shooting its supportive power to the right, this big bar here. But we also have the 200 there that is shooting its power upward, creating two-ply Egyptian cotton. It's a beautiful thing. You know? And so now, a pullback into this peer into this zone will likely get halted that's the theme of our talk today halts hark who goes there wow whenever i see it it's beautiful is this 100 percent? of course not that's why we have stops you can't ever find something that is 100%. We are probability players. We isolate or collect, I should say, things that have high probability, but that doesn't mean they have 100% accuracy. Nothing will. So here is your buy. Now, I don't like that bar so much, but it's still lowered risk enough to try it. And guys, a, a lot of your success in finding plays that work will be rooted in what the risk element or risk unit is. Some of you like to do the R unit, fine. But this is a bar unit, right? So your bar unit here is small. Relative to the price, of course. Okay? So you're risking this but look at what the possibility was. And there's your snowman, right? Remember the snowman? Mm, 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 little three buttons there. Put a little hat on him here. I like a little snowman with a hat I used to make when I was a kid. You know? There you go. Little tree branches for arms. I used to put the tree branch for the arms. The little boots there. I used to grab some extra boots from my closet. And I used to put Oreo cookies. All right? Oreo cookies as three buttons which are your three legs of your move, right? Yeah, that's how I used to make snowmen when I was a little kid. Oreo cookies, tree twigs, old hat somewhere, and extra pair of boots or something. And of course I needed snow. You want risk units to be small. 
You see, you want risk units to be small. You want maximum loss trades as well, like this would be maybe using more of your maximum loss. But most of your trades should have small risk units. You know what I'm saying? If most of your trades don't have small risk units, you're prob that's probably a key area to focus on to improve your trading. So let me, let me we're going to cover this tactic I want to cover, but this is getting off into a very good point here. Traders, the majority of your trades need to have these little risk units. Only a smaller portion should have the big risks. So if the majority of your trades are elephants and tails and 180s, that's probably a problem. Because that means that the majority of your losses are going to be bigger than normal. Yes, it's okay to have a percentage of your plays this way because the moves from these big bars can be so big. You understand? But it can't be the majority. You, you have to have the mix of little risk units, smaller risk unit plays. So they have to balance out the big bar plays. So what are your, you know what your small, your R, the RBIs. Now arrange bar plays. And it's not that you can't have, like this tail bar is a little risk unit. It's just not a big tail bar. So you can have a miniature elephant bar that is a small risk unit. You can have the now range bar that's a small risk unit, the color change. You can have a, 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 a miniature tail bar that's a, a small risk unit. And then you have your big bars, you see? Your big bars, these are your bigger risk unit plays. You don't not do them, it's just that you can't make that 99% of your plays. You should not be doing maximum loss per trade on the majority of your trades. That means that you are doing little unit risk plays very infrequently, which is wrong. And I would say a good place to start is 50-50. 50% 50, 50 of your plays, narrow range bar plays, and 50, the other 50% 50 big bar plays. Think about this. If, if you're wrong, if you're wrong four times, with that, but you're right once with that, you're still enormously profitable. You do realize that, right? You can lose four times. You can lose five times. You can lose six times. You can lose ten times. Sometimes. You can lose four, five times and get one of these and still be enormously profitable. So. Don't lose sight of the fact that you need this mixture of plays, not just all elephants, not just all big giant tail bars, not just all bull and bear 180s. You need 50% of your plays little small risk plays to balance that out. All right? How to hold this trade? How to hold this trade? How about just focusing on the moving average and just relaxing? How's that, Vishal? Sound simple enough? We've talked about this many times, right? So, guys, when you get your when you get a whale, boom, 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 and you take some off on the whale, complete, right? If you want to leave some in, what's your automatic go-to to leave it in? Moving average. It might not be the 8. It could be the 8, the 13, or the 20, depending upon how much room you want to give it. 
but that's your automatic go-to. Once you cross the high and you take profits, if you want to go for the home run, meaning more than your whale, you go to the moving average and relax. It's the same formula every time. Take profits, new high, whale complete. I now want to see if I get more moving average. Can't get simpler than that. Carmen says she's still trying to find that relaxing thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, guys, sometimes you can still just be too focused on the minutia. And, and, and that's what the purpose of a moving average is, right? To eliminate the need to focus on the minutia as long as that's rising. Now, look at this power bar. Look, look at the fabulous four. Look at the fabulous four. And your stock opens under the fabulous four. Okay? But it produces its first bar, which is powerful. But now we know that if we're under there, that the preferable trade is a short. You can have a long, but the preferable one is a short. So the person who wants to short on the next reversal of color, which means I'm going to short SPCE when red eliminates green. Well, red eliminates green right here. But you're right next to power, making this a low odd short. We have to distance ourselves away from power first to get a good odds short. You understand? And so, so had, all right, took the short here on the tail, okay? Because there was room to fall back to the power. You see guys, power shoots its influence to the right. Look at this influence, which means that it's going to be hard to penetrate that. So look at the stock try to penetrate it. Boing, boing, it bounces out of the force field. Look at how the stock comes right back to that power zone and bounce off of it. So if you're going to short, you had better be high enough above that power to have room to drop to the power because the power is likely to bounce your stock. Does that make sense? A few of you let me know. So I, I, want, you, I want you all to understand this. This green bar is shooting its influence this way. This is like thick layer of support. You see? Boing. It's going to be hard for red to penetrate every level of that power. It's not impossible. I'm just talking about odds. The odds of getting through all of those levels is very small. Now, the odds are different if the green is broken up, right? So if the green is like this going to the upside, See, so now it's a different set of odds if you short here. I'm talking about this versus that. So whenever you're shorting next to power, you're already, most of the time, you already lost. Not every time. Nothing's every time. But most of the time, you're already lost. Now... There are times you're going to miss an opportunity. You're going to be like, yeah, Oliver said not to short neck, and this thing is going to do this. This happened to me today. 
some of my traders took it, but I told them I'm not taking it just because of this concept. Let me show you the concept. So I dive into this bar right here. Boom. I dive into Apple. Before that bar finishes, I'm just in. Boom. I'm in it. Okay. I cover right cover right off the low and I go long for a quick scalp but I told him I said listen I'm going long I'm out on my short I'm going long here I'm coming out on a scalp to the upside but I want to go short again so I, 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 I covered the short got out and then said you know what I'm not doing the short right now I need us to get up here somewhere in order to do the short. Now, why did I say that? Wow, Apple's on the move right now. But why did I say that? Because I told them this move up is powerful. I'm not shorting next to that power. If we get away from it, all right. But I'm not shorting next to it. And okay, I missed my opportunity. Some traders said, Oliver, I'm giving it a shot. Fine. They won. I didn't take it because of the concept I'm explaining to you. So nothing's 100%. But what I'm saying is that a lot of the time, if you short right next to that, this thing does boing like that. So whenever I have power, if I'm going to short, if I'm looking to short, I need us away from that power. Now, let me let me let me let me add this part. It is the top third of power that is your cushion, the biggest cushion. There's another cushion under it too, but the top third is really very powerful cushion. All right. So if we go back to um, the SPCE, right? It's so have played. Look at this power, and then look at the top third of it. So this is the top of it, right? All right. Now go all the way and look at where. Like we're really bouncing off the top of it. You understand? So it's the top third all the way to the half, but the top third is the heaviest layer of support. All right. Now we can take a look at Apple now. All right. And so what's the odds of a short? Here, what's the odds of that short working? High or low? Not zero. Don't say zero. But it's low because you're remember, you're next to power. Is it impossible? No. It's just that's not gonna be a high odds one. Maybe two, two, three out of ten you might get. 